So what is the, why do we even care about doing a VLOOKUP? So if you look at this data set right here, we have a list of cars and we have things like car name, year, price, and I think there's about 300 or so list of cars and all their attributes. And if I want to do a basic VLOOKUP, let's say on this XS4, XX4 car, and I want to pull back the number of kilometers driven, I can go over here and write equals VLOOKUP, and then just manually type in SX4, comma, and I'm going to select all my data here. And the kilometers driven is column four, doing exact match. And you're going to notice that it gets the exact uh, number. But if I, let's say I do the word C as, the C as car, we also get 6,900. But you'll notice that there are actually multiple C as cars and SX4 cars in this list. And so how do you know that you're getting the right value or if there aren't duplicate values? In reality, you're actually getting this row back. Well, the, the VLOOKUP finds the first exact match and it could also pull back this, num this one and this one. And so we're not really getting all the values that we want. And more specifically, this is not a unique list of cars. There are, there's a combination of cars, years, and price, which all lead to different answers depending on what you want to pull back. So in this case, let's say I want to do a VLOOKUP and I want to have multiple conditions or multiple criteria that I want to VLOOKUP on. So I want to find the fuel type, which is this column right here, column E. I want to find the fuel type for a car that has a car type of C as, the year it was built is 2015 or the model, and has 15,000, exactly 15,000 kilometers driven on it. So you can't do a regular V lookup left parentheses and just select all these things because you have multiple columns now that you want to do a V lookup on. So how would you consider, how would you create a V lookup formula that takes into account multiple criteria in your list of data? So we have this column we care about, the car name, the year, and the kilometers driven. So the first, I'm gonna show you three different methods. The first method I think is the most complicated, but I mean, there's like many things in Google Sheets and Excel, you can do multiple, there's multiple ways and methods of getting to the answer. This is one method which I think is interesting but also quite complicated. It involves the use of the array formula function in Google Sheets, as well as the bracket notation for combining arrays together. So I'm gonna go over here to the left, or right rather, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna put into parentheses uh, let's say we're going to do car name. So for everything from here has to equal C as. So everything column A, we're going to look at everything column A and find instances where the car name equals C as. And then find all the instances for the year that equals the year we care about, which is cell I6 in this case. And then also the kilometers driven. We want to find the ones that exactly match 15,000. So this is not going to give us anything. It's probably going to give us an error, actually, equal to zero. And the way to make this kind of work, well, just to recap what we're doing here, we're looking at all of column, almost all of column A, just our, our list, where it equals I5, which is C as, all of column B, that equals 2015, and then all of column D, that equals I7, which is kilometers driven. Now, since this is kind of, we're acting on the entire list of data, I have to wrap all this in an array formula in Google Sheets, put this in parentheses, Let me close this thing out, or X this out rather. And notice how when I do that, it gives me a bunch of zeros and, well, hopefully ones. There's a one near the top here, right here. But what I'm telling Google Sheets to do right now is give me an array, create, find me all of the cells that match each, each of these conditions and then apply that to the entire list of data all at once. In Excel, in order to do the equivalent of an array formula, you would do Control, Shift, Enter, but in Google Sheets, you can just put this all inside a formula. And what results is a list of zeros and ones, and the ones will match up exactly with the row where there is a match. <clears throat> so for instance, in our list of data here, we only have this row, I actually highlighted in yellow, if you look at the example of Google Sheet in the show notes, this is the only row 
where the car type is Ciaz, the year 2015, and the kilometers driven is 15,000. So when I look at this list of zero and ones, that one equates to the this row, which is row 14 in my Google Sheet, and everything else is zeros because there's no other exact match that match those three conditions of Ciaz, 2015, and 15,000 kilometers driven. So what can we do with this array of zero and ones to get the fuel type that we care about, which is column E in our VLOOKUP. So the next thing we need to do is actually create a second column in our kind of list. So imagine this is like a separate list of data. What we want is another column that basically contains all of our fuel types. So if I do this manually, it'll look something like this, where we have the zero matching up with the first row of petrol, the second zero matches up with diesel, so on and so forth. But we want to do this in a more automated way in a formula. And what you can do is wrap this again inside brackets. Now brackets allow you to con combine multiple arrays or lists of data together. So my first list is going to be my array formula of the zero and ones. But my second list is going to be comma, everything in the fuel type list, which is E2 to E302. Now if I hit, um, if I put this a right bracket here, so just to recap, I'm putting everything in brackets. My array formula returns all those zero and ones. My E2 to E302 returns all these fuel types. And let's see what happens when I hit enter here. You now see I have a list of a new table of data, if you will, of zero and ones. But that one will match up with that fuel type that I care about, which is petrol, which matches up with this row right here. So imagine that this is our new table we're doing a VLOOKUP on. So what I could do is I'm going to copy. Well, I'm actually going to do a VLOOKUP right here just to show you the example. VLOOKUP, I'm going to look for the number one in this list of data I just created, comma two, because I'm pulling back the second column from this little table, comma zero. Whoops, zero. And if I scroll back up just to see what I did here. I'm doing a VLOOKUP looking for the number one in this list of data, K9 through L309, comma two, comma zero. Hit enter. And I get that petrol value back. And instead of making this in a separate list, which doesn't really make sense, I'm just gonna copy this and then put this as the table that I want to look up in, look up at, or look up on. <laughs> and I can delete this. And now if I look at my formula, this is the formula for the first method, which I find the most complicated. You have a V lookup looking at number one in this two column list of data, which is combined. The first column is zero and ones with the one matching up with this row 14. And then E2 to E302 is just this fuel type column. And then I'm doing the V lookup on those two, that two column table, pulling back the second column doing an exact match. And that's how I get to the petrol uh, value here in row 14 of my list of data. So a little complicated, requires your, your knowledge of knowing how to do Boolean logic with the array formula, with this bracket notation for combining arrays, and of course the VLOOKUP formula, which we all, we all have come to love and hold dear to our hearts. So that's method one. Method two is a little easier, and it utilizes the index and match functions, which you probably have used before if you are using a little more advanced formulas in Excel, you may know that if index and match is an alternative alternative to VLOOKUP. If you don't know well how to do this, I have a link in the show notes to how to use index and match to a previous episode. I think it's episode number 68, I believe. But you also can use um, brackets in this formula. Oh, actually, no, you're actually just using index, match, and index. I should re rename this, actually. You're not using brackets and index. And let's take a look at how this formula works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually copy these conditions again. This A2 equals I5. Actually, I'm gonna rewrite them because it's gonna be using different cell references. So I'm gonna write equals, same thing here. I'm looking at everything from A2 to A32 equals, but this time I'm gonna say equals to I13 times year, which is column B equals this cell right here, and then times the kilometers driven has to equal 
I15. So we've seen this formula before, or rather the, this combination of Boolean logic. And what we're gonna do is put this inside an index function. So I'm gonna write index, left parentheses, and then that this array is actually our first list of data and put comma zero comma one. And what this tells Google Sheets is don't pull back any, don't move around in the rows, don't pull back any rows from this, pull back just the first column of data. But this actually results to an array of only one column of data anyways. So if you look at the arguments for index, actually I don't think, it, let's just take a look and see what, if I write index, it should give me the, here you go. So if you look at the reference, you're looking at the row and the column are optional. I'm not pulling back any number of, or offsetting number of rows. I'm offsetting only one column, but the resulting, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the resulting array is actually only one column long. So that's why I only have, I have one as the only argument for this um, index function. But the interesting thing about index, unlike the, this formula here, is that we had to wrap everything, all these kind of Boolean logic inside the array formula. But with the index function, the index function can actually can receive an array uh, as an input or as a parameter. So you don't have to do any array formula craziness here. So it's a little easier to use in my opinion. And what you have as a result is a bunch of zero and ones. Now we could do the same thing as method one where we create a separate bracket uh, function, bracket function where we have like the first list of data followed by the field type. But instead, I'm just gonna do a basic index match from here and use that in this cell, I17. So what I'm gonna do right here is write index. And the column I care about again is column E. And then comma, I'm just gonna move up here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna match the number one in this list of data right here. And hopefully you can kind of see where this is going. This should give me back petrol, because let's take a look at what this is doing. I'm looking, I wanna find in this list of cells, E2, D3, E32, I wanna find, I wanna pull back the value where it matches all of my conditions, which starts in, which is this thing right here, which is all these zero and ones. So I'm only want, I only want to pull back row 14 here in my in my data set. So that's what this match thing here does. I'm matching number one in my list of zero and one so that, so that the index function out here knows which row to pull back from, from E2 to E302. So just like method one, I can take all this, this index function, copy it, and replace this K17 to K317 with that formula, hit enter and it should give me the same result. And the formula here now is a little more complicated to read, but at least it's all in one place. So we have the outer index, which looks at column E, or the fuel type, and everything else is basically trying to match the one in a list of zero and ones, which we also saw in method one. So this index match function to with multiple criteria is a little easier to use. It still uses all this Boolean logic, but it doesn't, require any knowledge of the array formula, which is control shift enter in Excel. And I think you can use this same formula in Excel and it should work because index by default can accept an array of values as the first uh, parameter. So that's method two. Method three is actually my preferred method because it's honestly just like <laughs> the easiest and most quickest to implement. And it's where you're gonna combine multiple columns together or concatenate multiple columns together. And I'll preface this by saying, this is kind of the hackiest way and probably most or least scalable solution, but it's the quickest way and probably the easiest to understand. So this solution will, will really be easy for you to do if you have edit access to the underlying data. So you have edit access to all this data. You can add new columns, you can delete columns. Your data set does not change very much and the number of columns you're concatenating also doesn't change because if you're trying to look up like five columns or four columns, then you're gonna have to constantly change this formula. But if you only have three columns you're always looking at, then this formula, this solution should work out okay. 
So it starts with, sorry if you hear that thunder in the background, it's raining right now in, uh, in New York. If I insert a new column to the left here, I'm gonna call this combine columns. And all I'm gonna do is concatenate car name, ampersand, year, and then the kilometers driven. And so all this is gonna result in is this kind of like undecipherable like, you know, value but it combines basically the car name, the year, and the kilometers driven, and then just drag this all the way down to my my last row value. So now each each row has this unique identifier that is a combination or concatenation of car name, year, and kilometers driven. So as you can imagine, this will make my VLOOKUP super easy because I have a column that represents my unique identifier, and there's a bunch of reasons why this is not a scalable solution and you can look at my previous um, episode I linked to in the show notes on why this is useful, but also why it's very prone to error. But we're not gonna discuss that here. All I need to do now in my VLOOKUP formula is write VLOOKUP, and then I just concatenate these three values that are, I'm interested in, con in looking up these specific criteria. And this is my first lookup value in my, or the first parameter in my, in my VLOOKUP formula. And then all I need to do is just reference this entire table. Oops, let me just write this again. V lookup. So we have C as and year and kilometers driven. And then I'm just gonna look up everything from column A through H, my entire table. And then I'm going to pull back column five, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, for the fifth column, which is the fuel type, exact match, and Oops, I think that was actually column six, rather. It's the same answer. And this formula is obviously much shorter to use because I created this kind of concatenated helper column to help me find the unique value for each of these rows. Because as you recall, this list of data is not unique by car name, but it probably is unique by if I combine car name, year, and kilometers driven, which is what I do here and which is what I do here. And so if I look up just this specific unique value of these three values concatenated together, you can see CIAS 2015, 15,000. I can then use that as the lookup column in my column A, and then just pull back column six, which is the fuel type to get the petrol. So this is my preferred method because normally I'm doing a really quick one-off analysis, and this is the easiest way and fastest way to get the answer I'm looking for without having to, to figure out all this crazy index match stuff or anything with the ray formulas and the bracket notation. This is my preferred method. So method number three, I'm just gonna put this as uh, preferred in parentheses. So it's very clear that I like this one. And those are the three methods for how you can do a VLOOKUP with multiple criteria in your, uh, in your, in your lookup value. And the last thing I want to mention is, like I said, if you are interested in learning more advanced formulas and advanced features in Excel, like what I just showed here with the VLOOKUP and multiple criteria or multiple uh, conditions, take a look at my Skillshare class called Advanced Formulas and Features to Create Efficient Team Workflows. It's only an hour long, but you'll learn things like offsets and IR and MPV, wildcards, goal seek, solver, basically some advanced stuff that you will be using in very specific scenarios when you're using Excel with your team to help you make better business decisions. And the link to this class is in the uh, episode show notes and also in the YouTube video if you're watching this on YouTube.